Good morning. My name is Deacon Michelle Collins. I serve as the assistant to the bishop for the Manitoba Northern Ontario Synod, and it's my pleasure to be part of this year's summer sermon series. There's a difference between building something by following the directions correctly and discovering something in the process of creating. Some things need a full and complete set of instructions, assembling a bicycle or fixing a machine, for example. But other things are best created when the directions are set aside and the heart and the imagination of the one creating can be let loose. When it comes to understanding what Jesus refers to as the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God, many people try to approach it like following a set of instructions. What do I need to do first? Do I need a wrench or a hammer? How will I know if I've built it correctly? We seek to construct the correct way of understanding and articulating how it is that God shows up in the world, what God is up to, and who God's work benefits. But Jesus makes it clear that the kingdom of heaven is not like following assembly instructions. It's more like listening to a story over and over again, each time hearing something different. It's more like the process of planting, where you watch the beauty of creation happen in a way that's largely beyond your understanding. It's more like being in a relationship with someone who gets more and more complex the deeper the relationship goes. It's more like sitting on a hillside listening to a story and realizing that the story isn't really about seeds and soil, but about the abundant potential of life and creation. In our gospel reading today, we read the first of several stories in a chapter that Jesus tells to try to describe or explain the kingdom. In Matthew chapter 13, these parables are all put together in one place, while in other gospels, they're interspersed through other activities and events. But in Matthew's gospel, they're all together in one space. So while we pick up one of them to look at it more closely, it would be for us to wonder what we may discover if we were to look at them all together. Jesus will often begin his teachings with something like, the kingdom of God is like, or the kingdom of heaven is like. But this story, he begins with an invitation to listen, which is already an invitation to imagination. There will be time for questions and analysis later. Start by listening. And he tells them a parable, which was a teaching technique they would have been familiar with, where a teacher tells a story that means something other than what the story is about. So while he tells a story about a farmer scattering seeds, the disciples at least realized that he was really talking about something else. And we know this because they ask him about it later. It's so easy to get caught up in trying to draw clear and concise conclusions about what each part of a parable represents and what exactly Jesus was trying to say. But parables weren't meant to be clear and concise. They were purposely intended to invite the audience into deeper listening and wondering. In Jesus' story about the farmer, the seeds don't get much say in where they land. The image of the sower is one who generously scatters seeds in all directions. It doesn't even look like the sower takes much time to evaluate the likelihood that the seeds that he's sowing will grow. He goes ahead and throws the seed broadly and generously. He must know that seeds don't grow in rocky path. He must know that seeds don't grow in the midst of weeds. But that doesn't stop the farmer from scattering the seed anyway. I can almost hear all the expert farmers in the crowd shooting their hands up and challenging Jesus' story. They would immediately see that the sower should have known better than to scatter the seeds in places he knew wouldn't produce life. But I can just as clearly see Jesus saying, listen, listen. What if there's something else going on in this story? Throughout the gospel accounts, we read various versions of how people respond to Jesus' message. Some rejected the message outright. Some listened for a bit, but when the teaching got challenging or they didn't get what they wanted when they, got, when they wanted it, they left. Even the disciples weren't always particularly receptive to what Jesus was saying. And many of them ran away when being associated with him became risky for them. In fact, many of the disciples had multiple responses to what Jesus was saying, depending on the day and the situation. But Jesus kept teaching them. He kept loving them. He kept inviting them into a deeper listening. He kept scattering the seed of life, of healing, of restoration, hoping that those who heard it would be ready for it to take root and grow in them. 
And Jesus does the same thing for us. Sometimes we are the rocky path, sometimes the weeds. Every now and then, we're the good soil. Sometimes we're receptive to the word of the kingdom and it takes root in our souls, but then gets choked out by the worries of the world. Sometimes due to pain, tragedy, or trauma, the word of life and hope just can't even find its way in and gets snatched up almost as soon as it lands. But every now and then, the seed takes root. We hear the words of life and forgiveness declared to us, and we respond through faith and love for God and for neighbor. But even though we are not always the good soil, Jesus the Word doesn't give up on us. The sower keeps scattering seeds and extending invitations to us to listen, to discover the kingdom that God is bringing about, and to be open to the creative mystery of life and love that has been planted in us. Jesus cautions us not to get caught up in judging ourselves or others for the condition of the heart. That's not what this is about. Receive the gift of life, he seems to be saying. Participate in the mystery of creation. Tend to the environment so that life has the best chance possible to thrive. And keep listening so that when the word of God sneaks up on you, you can detect it. Keep listening so that when the word of God happens to you, you receive it. Rest from the impulse to control and construct the perfect response. You won't always get it right. And a lot of times you won't even really understand what God is doing in your life. But listen, open yourself up to the possibility that there's something deeper, more profound going on within and around you. And let the seed of God's word take root in your life. In the Lord's Prayer, we pray this phrase that we might often rush past, Thy kingdom come. In his explanation of this petition, Martin Luther wrote that the kingdom will come whether or not we pray for it to, but in this, we pray that it comes to us. The kingdom will come whether or not we pray for it to, but in this, we pray that it comes to us. The sower will scatter seeds because that's what the sower does. In this, we pray that the seeds that land in the soil of our lives and in our communities will take root, will grow and will produce rich and abundant fruit and blessing for all. When Jesus talks about the kingdom, he makes it clear that the kingdom is not something we find through our own efforts. We don't work our way into it. We don't pay for it or earn it. The kingdom is a gift, a seed that is planted, a treasure that is discovered. And the gift of the kingdom is for all, those who get it and those who don't. Let anyone with ears listen, Jesus says. Discipleship is the journey of being shaped and transformed by the seed of faith that is planted in us through the grace of God. Growing as a disciple happens as we pray that the kingdom comes to us. The seed takes root and grows in us and through us for the sake of the world. So if you find yourself trying to follow the instructions correctly in an effort to be right with God or to correctly construct the accurate understanding of how God shows up in the world, these parables from Jesus invite you to be released from that pressure. Understanding God's kingdom is less like following a manual of instructions and more like listening to stories or looking through a kaleidoscope. Each time you listen, you hear something new each time you turn the kaleidoscope, you see something different. So this week, pick up this story of the sower who generously scatters seed without being preoccupied with the result and look at it again. Turn it to the left and to the right to rearrange the pieces a bit and see what new thing emerges. Shake it up a bit and look again. That's where growth and life happens. The sower will keep sowing seeds. The kingdom will come, whether or not we pray for it to. In this, we pray that it takes root and grows in us. Amen.